since differential equations have derivatives in them, in order to solve them, we're going to need integrals. So I need you to also make sure that you remember the material from your Calc 2 experience. So I'll go over uh, some of the basic integration rules that might be helpful to know along the way. And I'm not going to dive into actually doing any of those problems because we'll be doing a lot of that throughout the course together. But it is my hope that you will take the time to go back and review those Calc 2 notes that you have somewhere as well. All right, so there's really three kind of integrals. We'll talk about two of them right now, and then we'll jump on the third one after we talk about these first two. So the first one is an indefinite integral. It's one that doesn't have those bounds of integration. Notice there's no values on the actual integral sign itself. Now, remember when you do the integration with these, you need to add C, you need to add in constant to your response. Now, if we do have those bounds of integration, the A and the B that are present on the integral sign on the definite integral, um, then we don't need that constant because we've already found it using those bounds of integration. So those integration bounds A and B, they need to be numbers. So that's one thing to remember along the way. So there's two basic rules that are going to be super helpful beyond like just normal integration. So substitution is a helpful rule to remember. This is the opposite of the chain rule, basically. So if you have an integral of something that looks like a function of a function, and then that inner function's derivative is there, then you can do a substitution saying let u be that inner function, just that single letter, that single variable u, and then you can integrate just that outer function and then account for the substitution that you've made. So that's called substitution. Another type of integration that you might be doing is integration by parts. So in this case, you have something that looks kind of like a function times another function. So we've got some kind of product happening. And that second function, we need it to be a derivative. So we have to choose carefully which function we choose to be the function that is a derivative versus not. Because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to be able to integrate the function that we choose to be the derivative of whatever so that we know what the original function was. And we need to be able to differentiate the function that we choose to not already be a derivative. So integration by parts, this is the blue is what it looks like when it's written out with functions. You've probably seen it more likely that f of x is written as u and g of x is written as v. So g prime of x is written as dv. So the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Third kind of integral that we can encounter is called an improper integral. These are integrals that have either negative infinity or infinity or both in the limits of integration. So if we have an upper bound of integration of infinity from some constant a, we can take a limit as t approaches infinity and replace that infinity with a t and then proceed like this is a definite integral before then taking the limit of our answer that we arrive at. Similarly, if negative infinity is the lower bound, we can do the same thing, taking a limit as t approaches negative infinity with t as the lower bound, and again, integrate just like we would in the case of a definite integral, and then after we've finished integrating, we'll take a limit. And if we have both negative infinity and infinity as bounds of integration, then what we do is we add together. We choose some constant to be a cutoff point. Zero is a very common choice and we take the integral from zero to infinity and then we add to that the integral from negative infinity to zero and we'll have to take those limits for each of these. 
because we're taking these limits, we can talk about whether these integrals actually converge or diverge. It's nothing to do with the integral itself, it's the limit that's converging or diverging. But we'll say that the integral itself converges or diverges because the integral itself, the ones that are on the left-hand side of the equal sign here, those integrals are in fact converging or di diverging depending on what the limits are doing on the right-hand side of these equal signs. So just remember things converge if the value comes to a concrete value, a finite value, and it diverges if it goes off, shoots off to infinity or down to negative infinity, or if it's waffling back and forth between two values that are not the same value. All right, so lots of things that could, could happen there. So please keep in mind when you're asked if something converges or diverges, you're being asked about improper integrals and you need to be taking these limits. So I didn't do any examples there, but hopefully that got some rust off from what was hopefully a fairly recent course when you took Calc 2. If it hasn't been recent and you're struggling with this stuff, please reach out, ask questions. I'm happy to help you out, um, but I don't want to bore you forcing you to watch me do examples. So I'm going to hold off on that unless you need it. Um, also, I wanted to point out to you in your book, right beside the front cover has the differentiation stuff, and right beside that is integration stuff. So if you need some common integrals or are looking for some trig information or stuff like that, there's a good resource for you. Again, please don't become dependent on that. Um, use it as a thing to help you learn it maybe in the first place and then use it as something to bolster your confidence, not as something that you always need to look back to. So do put in the time and effort to really, truly learn those things.